In the early stages of my rain barrel system electrical setup, I temporarily used a larger size fuse than what was recommended by the manufacturer for my pump since I did not have the correct size on hand and I wanted to keep moving forward with the project. The manufacturer advised to use a 10 amp fuse, but I believe I only had a 25 amp fuse on hand at the time, so I told myself once I get time, I'll go to the store, buy the correct size fuse within the week. Well, one week turned into one month, and one month turned into six months, and you get the point. Well, as some of you know, eventually pumps will require some form of maintenance to be performed in order for it to continue to run efficiently. Else, an issue that can occur after internal components experience wear and tear is the pump will start to draw more current since it is having to work harder to do its job. Additionally, when I was first getting started and learning some of the basics, I did not use a filter prior to my pump's inlet port, and I let the pump continue to run for a brief moment while the outlet port was closed off and several other small mistakes that could impact how soon maintenance may need to be performed on the pump. Also, if you've been following me for a while, you know I used a Wi-Fi relay switch that would allow me to remotely control my water pump so I could water my garden from just about any location in the world. Well, the Wi-Fi relay switch included a 10 amp built-in relay, which is very close to the normal amp draw of the water pump. Well, as the pump started to draw more amps due to needing maintenance to be performed, and since my fuse size was larger than my Wi-Fi controller's built-in relay, the Wi-Fi controller was damaged once the pump started to draw more than 10 amps. If I would have used the correct size fuse, it's possible the fuse may have blown first, which would have protected my Wi-Fi controller. I was thankful that my Wi-Fi controller was only about $14, but all this could have been avoided if I would have taken the time initially and installed the correct size fuse. I know many of us tend to make the mistake of rushing to get things done, but learn from me and take that additional small amount of time to do things correctly or to the best of your abilities the first time. Also, remember, you're human and you will continue to make different mistakes as you take on new and different tasks or projects, but as long as you're learning from those mistakes, you are increasing your wisdom so in this video, I will show you some of the things I did to make my electrical system a little more robust in this area so the next time this happens, there will be a little bit more protection in place and I can get my system back up and running much quicker. Anyway, let's get to it. Before getting started on my electrical work, I disconnected my solar power source. Next, I prep my electrical tote by removing components that would no longer be required. I also wanted to create a dedicated positive and negative bus bar inside my electrical tote so that it was a little easier to visually see most of my electrical connections and so that I could quickly connect and disconnect the electrical wires. Note, I ended up using two different types of bus bars since they were the only types I had on hand and I wanted to keep the overall cost for this project low, but they accomplished the same goal. Next, I ordered some L-shaped plastic feet for my new Wi-Fi relay board to help keep the board secured and in place on my wooden mount. Also, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please smash that like button to help encourage YouTube to share these videos with others who may find it helpful and it also supports this channel. I also like that the plastic feet came with screws, plenty of spare feet for other projects, and they were low cost. Once my Wi-Fi relay was properly fastened down, I moved on to the new star of the show, a heavy duty relay that is rated to be able to handle 120 amps. You might be asking, why in the world did you need a relay this size? And the answer is because it would allow more room for growth in the future if I wanted to power a larger pump. And it was only $12, so I said, why not? So to quickly summarize how this relay works, when I supply 12 volts to terminals 86 and 85, the relay contacts inside close and allows whatever is connected to terminals 87 and 30 to operate, which in my case will be my water pump. This takes a huge responsibility off the Wi-Fi relay having to be the brains of the operation and having to handle the large load that the pump could potentially draw. For many of my electrical connections I needed to make, I had to use a variety of electrical terminals. To keep the video a tad bit shorter, I would not show myself adding these terminals onto each wire, but just know the process I used is very similar to this quick disconnect terminal I'm adding to this wire. I will also leave links in the description for where you can find the components and tools I'm using in this video. Next, I started to wire up my Wi-Fi controller's relay to the new heavy duty relay. 
Note, I use the normally open side of the Wi-Fi relay so that if I lose power to my Wi-Fi controller, my pump will turn off by default. Also, you can find an easy to follow picture-based electrical diagram in the description below if you have a hard time following what's connected to what. Also, please understand that the content in this video is not intended to substitute professional advice. Always seek the advice of a qualified electrician for any questions you may have regarding electrical work. Next, I disconnected my temporary positive connection to my water pump since now my heavy duty relay would be responsible for opening and closing this connection to allow the pump to run. Once my ring terminals were crimped onto the positive wires for my water pump, I connected the wires to my heavy duty relay. Note, I also slightly bent the terminals to help guide the wires in the proper direction. Next, I used a ratchet to fully tighten the water pump connections on the heavy duty relay. Next, I ran electrical connections from my positive and negative bus bars to the power input terminals on my Wi-Fi relay controller. Next, I connected all the negative connections from my solar charge controller, water pump, and battery to the new negative bus bar. Note, I was using a wire connector previously as a temporary negative connection point, and running these connections to a bus bar is optional. I chose to do it this way to help ease connecting or disconnecting connections in the future and to keep things a little more organized. Next, I connected the positive connection from my solar charge controller to my positive bus bar. Followed by that, I connected the positive terminal of my 12 volt battery to the positive bus bar. After everything was electrically wired and my Wi-Fi relay had power, I began performing the configuration steps through the eWe Link app so that I could control the Wi-Fi relay remotely from my phone. Since I've already gone into detail in a previous video for how to complete this easy process, I will leave a link in the description for that video and the timestamp. After setting up the new Wi-Fi controller, I performed a quick on and off test to verify the Wi-Fi relay and the heavy duty relay was working properly. The heavy duty relay does not have any type of LED indication when it is energized, but you can hear the relay as it's closing and opening. Also, instead of using a 10 amp fuse to help prevent electrical issues in the future, I installed a 10 amp DC breaker by Midnight Solar. I went with a breaker instead of a fuse so that if the pump ever did use more than 10 amps, the breaker would simply trip and once I fixed the issue that caused the breaker to trip, I could easily flip the breaker back to the own position. Whereas if I used a fuse, I would have to fix the issue and then either find another 10 amp fuse or head to the store to grab another one before I could use the pump again. Also, I decided to mount my 10 amp breaker for my water pump in this enclosure box because it already had a DIN rail installed, but it's completely up to you where you install your inline 10 amp fuse or breaker for your water pump on the positive wire. After the dry test was completed, I turned all my breakers back on and my solar disconnect to perform the final functionality test. When I activated the pump with the EWE Link app, I was happy to see that the system was working as expected. Overall, this was a fun upgrade to my rain barrel system. If you found this video useful or think others may take something away from this video, be sure to subscribe and like the video to encourage YouTube to share this video with others. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.